Hey there, and welcome to the extra, the amateur extra element four study section. We're in sub element five Bravo, and this this one's a doozy, y'all. I hope you're ready. The question number one is just one you can remember. What is the term for the time required for the capacitor in an RC circuit to be charged to 63.2% of the applied voltage or to discharge to 36.8 of its initial voltage? That is one time constant. And if you want to learn about time constants, you can go to Electronics Tutorials, not a sponsor and not sponsored, not making any money. But they'll explain the circuit and they'll show you some graphs and they'll also give you the formula. So the formula you will need to know is the time is roughly the resistance times the capacitance. So resistance in ohms, capacitance in farads, will give it in seconds. Now farads is going to be a itty bitty number. Resistance is going to be a really, really big number. So let's go ahead. We'll, we'll do one of those in just a moment. What letter is commonly used to represent susceptance? Susceptance is the letter B, so you do need to remember that. So if we look at this wonderful little chart that I made here, resistors, the resistance is R. Conductance is G equals 1 over R, or it's the, the reciprocal, the reciprocal. Capacitance is C, but capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 times pi times the frequency times the capacitance in farads. So remember, a decimal. Susceptance is just capacitive reactance inverted. So it's the inverse, 1 over x over c. Inductance is L, but inductive reactance is 2 times pi times the frequency times the inductance in Henry's. The susceptance, again, is simply the reciprocal. So instead of x over or x xl you have 1 over xl which xl just means inductive reactance it should be x with a subscript l but unfortunately in paint i didn't feel like doing it i uh, just used a lowercase c over here for the lowercase c so it's the letter b that is what um susceptance is is the letter b how is impedance in polar form converted to an equivalent admittance? Now, we're talking about another reciprocal. I did not show you this one, but impedance is, the, is converted to admittance by taking the reciprocal of that magnitude, or the reciprocal of what the impedance is, and then change the sign of the angle. Just remember that one. Just remember it. What is the time constant of a circuit having two 220 microfarad capacitors and two 1 megohm resistors all in parallel? That is a tough question because there's multiple parts to figure this one out. Two 220 microfarad capacitors in parallel, parallel capacitances add. So instead of just two 220s, you can think of it as a 440 microfarad capacitor. The formula for parallel resistances is different. Parallel resistances is 1 divided by the resistance total equals 1 divided by resistor 1 plus 1 divided by resistor 2 and so on depending on how many are in parallel. So two parallel mega ohm resistors actually gives you 500,000 or 500K ohms. You have to do that part first. Then you bring up your magic calculator. You can see this is probably take 1 million of this particular video. So you go 220 is 440 microfarads which is e negative six that is the scientific notation for micro 
and you multiply that times 500,000 or 500E3. And that gives you 220 seconds. Memorize that answer. I mean, 220, 220. You're going to see one of these questions on the test. It may be this one, maybe one of the other 14. What is the effect on the magnitude of pure reactants when it is converted to susceptance? We're talking about the reciprocal again. It is replaced by its recipro reciprocal. So going back to this again, you have capacitive reactants, inductive reactants, susceptance is just the reciprocal of that capacitive reactants or inductive reactants. What is susceptance? Now, we learned earlier, if we scroll back up, that susceptance is, what is it? It's an in inverse. So, it's also the imaginary part of admittance. And what I did not show you on this particular one is impedance. And susceptance is part of impedance. So it's the imaginary part of admittance. So again, remember the imaginary part of admittance. Man, we've only made it through six of these. Okay, now we have some math coming up. What is the phase angle between the voltage across and current through a series RLC circuit if the capacitive reactance is 500 ohms, the resistance is 1 kilo ohm, and the, uh, the inductive reactance is 250 ohms? The answer is 14 degrees with the voltage lagging the current. I did make something for this. So let's fade into. I work these out for you. So the formula to find phase angle is the arc tangent of capacitive re, uh, inductive reactants minus capacitive reactants divided by resistance. So if you can remember XL minus XC divided by R and then take the arc tangent and you can see arc tangent is over on the calculator. You have to do the second key, might be a function key of tangent, should give you what looks like tangent negative one, that is arc tangent. So when you do the math, you get arc tangent of negative 0.25, that gives you negative 14 degrees. So we have 14 degrees. Now how do we figure out if voltage is lagging the current? Well, in this particular case, if you look down at the bottom, if the angle is negative, voltage lags the current. So if voltage lags the current, that means the capacitor probably is the bigger number in, in that formula. And if current leads voltage, that means voltage lags current in, a, in the capacitor. So just look at the angle. That's the easiest way to remember. Just look at the angle. So we had negative 14 degrees, so that's 14 degrees with voltage lagging the current. Going to the next one that we worked out, we have what is the phase angle between the voltage across and the current through a series RLC circuit if the capacitive reactance is 300 ohms, Resistance is 100 ohms, and the adductive reactance is 100 ohms. Well, if we fire up our trusty old math, look at the red one here. Have the same formula, arc tangent of inductive reactance minus capacitive reactance divided by resistance. So we have 100 is the inductive reactance. We have five, uh, 300 is the capacitive reactants. So see that the capacitor is bigger. So if the capacitor is bigger, that means voltage is going to lag current because current leads the voltage. Or if you'll see in a minute, we get negative 2 and then we get negative 63 degrees. So 63 degrees, negative 
means that voltage lags the current. Now, as an aside here, make sure that your calculator is set to degrees. If you do not set your calculator to, to degrees, you're going to get an answer in radians. If you accidentally do that, you can convert radians to degrees by multiplying your answer times 180 divided by pi. Or you could also multiply times 57 and you'll get a pretty close answer. That'll give it to you in degrees. Practice with your calculator before you go to a testing session. You don't want to be muddling, meddling, fussing with a calculator during the test uh, if this answer does come up and you do know the formula. Okay, so Eli the Iceman is coming up next. Eli the Iceman. What is the relationship between the AC current through a capacitor and the voltage across a capacitor? We're talking about a capacitor. So that's the ice man, I-C-E. So current, I, leads E, voltage, in a capacitor, and it's, it's 90 degrees. So uh, that's pure capacitance. It's 90 degrees. Uh, you can go back over here. You know if you're charging something, there's a lot of current flowing right here, but the voltage hasn't quite made it up yet. That's why voltage lags current when this is charging. It's pure capacitance. We won't talk about an inductance here, but it's the same, same, same thing. Eli, voltage, leads the current in in the L and that's probably backwards on your screen because it's forward for me so Eli the Iceman if you need to see it again I've got it on this lovely little picture here Eli the Iceman so for Eli voltage leads the current E I E is voltage I is current L is the inductor Eli the Iceman voltage leads current Iceman for a capacitor current leads the voltage so we've got hopefully all this worked out for you here and everything is hopefully sticking in your brain. So here we go. Here's, here's the second question. What is the relationship between the AC current through an inductor and the voltage across an inductor? Voltage leads current by 90 degrees. So voltage leads current. So Voltage leads current. You can see it right there for Eli. Voltage leads current. If you can remember Eli the Iceman, you'll have those two questions knocked out. And we have one more of these wonderful phase angles. Now, this one is a little bit different because now voltage is leading the current. Well, why is voltage leading the current? If you go back and look at my wonderful math, then you'll see the last one's in black. 75, see right here, the inductor is the bigger of the two. 75 minus 25 divided by 100 gives you an arc tangent of 0.5 or one half, and that gives us a positive 27 degrees. If the angle is positive, voltage leads the current. Well, where else does voltage lead current? That's in the inductor. So the inductor was the bigger of the two over here. So voltage leads current. So you can see how all this stuff ties together. Eli the Iceman, uh, the negative angles. It's neat how all that works. What is admittance? It is the inverse of impedance. Now that is the one I did not draw a picture of. We're gonna get into that in just a minute. It, I'm gonna take a nap before I video the next one. It's tough. What is admittance? The inverse of impedance. Impedance has to do with very complicated circuits and I'll try to find some examples to, to help you understand this just a little bit more. I'm Rob W1RCP, and just for the work that I had to put into this, please like this video, 
And if I made any mistakes in what I said, put it in the comments so it can help the next person coming along. Hey, thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can get the rest of this in 73.